I made 100 players crash land on a survival island all alone to see what would happen. What they don't know is that they aren't alone on this island. Deadly creatures and even abandoned structures all throughout the island. Players are also set to hardcore mode, so they only have one life. That means getting some food quickly should be their first priority. Well, we aren't exactly at a luxury restaurant, and the survivors spawned in clueless to their surroundings in this desert biome at a cruise ship that's not in the best shape or condition. They venture into the island in search for resources like wood, seeds, and even structures. For the first bit, people are in a grace period, no attacking other players directly, and they are mainly to explore before getting into groups that they form. But right as they arrive, there were the brave ones taking to the sea to the second they got onto the island. Since there's two main islands here, what they didn't realize is the waters were shark infested and had no remorse to those falling in. As you can probably tell, surviving is no easy feat. However, I do wonder how many will last during the first day. This survivor got this far swimming away from a shark, but he made it across safely somehow. This isn't the only threat to the island, so watch till the end of the video to see what monstrosities are waiting for these survivors. This is only the start. Poor thing, stranded alone without friends on the other island. Now back on the main island, they just don't learn, do they? Someone goes right into the water. <laughs> Waters are just not safe. Another deadly thing we had that was actually on the island was traps made to trick clueless and hasty survivors. <laughs> No, stop, bro. Did they go into here? Oh, they did. They activated the trap. And people got detonated out of this world. Phase 1 is announced, which is a grace period for survivors to make teams, explore for hidden treasures around the island, and prepare for the first mini event, the hunger event, which they have no idea about. Then after comes the build event, which survivors compete build-wise for a loot crate that even carries netherite in it. Don't want to miss out on that. And they began in a civilized manner. Yeah, okay, maybe not too civilized. Early on, these are the current teams, slowly forming and gathering members, the main ones being Team Black Sun, Team Ballers, Team Mushroom, and Team DJ. One of the survivors said they got lost, so I found him. I gave two pieces of iron for somehow getting lost only minutes into the event. This feels like I'm running a daycare. A survivor stumbled upon a tower far up the mountain, further into the island. Survivors also ended up discovering an existing town deep within, and realized there's a lot of civilians there. They explore the houses, finding remains of other people, leftover food left behind, and a secret they are yet to discover if they look deep enough. Found Crofter, later the leader of the Mushroom team. I gave him spy glasses for his journey. Good luck, buddy. What you looking at? I thought it would be nice to give these survivors a few things. So we found one that stumbled upon a mountain. You are probably gonna die up here. I'm not gonna hold you. With the lack of food. Starving away. So I gave him a fishing rod to fish in frozen water. See? I'm such a nice person. A survivor ended up not only finding, but also taming a horse. Marvin tamed a horse with a saddle? That's impressive, you know. That is really impressive. Impressive, I can't lie. Riding around the mountains like it was nothing. Some survivors got blessed up by the structures containing leather armor. Nice starter gear, to be honest, deep within the snowy mountains. The lack of food was immense. A member of Team Ballers, known as Eopo, found a small snow village located on the other side of the map. Honestly, it would be a nice place to make a little camp. I don't think anyone's come out this far. That spot has been taken. Diamonds! Oh my gosh. Then someone got diamonds right off of the bat, which I was a little suspicious of. So I went to go investigate. These events are not easy to make, so if you guys can hit that subscribe button, it'll mean the world to me. Also, if you're interested in joining in on one of these events, check out my pinned tweet on my Twitter below. Let's get back to checking out if this player is actually hacking. It wouldn't be difficult to x-ray in these events, so we had to keep watch over them. But it turns out that they found a chest that had diamonds within it. Quite the lucky find, so we gave him some apples for traveling back, because the chest with the diamond in it was in the most randomest spot. Let's Let's hope he doesn't get killed by a seagull or something dumb. Despite all the exploration that's being done, others decided it'd be best to begin mining to stack up for the war that'll happen in phase 3, which the survivors dreaded and kind of knew was coming. War breaking loose in civilization events are a pretty common thing. One of the members of Team Ballers ended up locating a hidden underground library that was filled with traps but also really good loot. They've been fortunate enough to not have been caught in any yet. And just look at his armor. Enchanted iron armor already? Team Ballers is looking like the most powerful nation so so far. Not to mention, they also seem to have the most accepting group that is willing to take new recruits. Find a little duck strolling around. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna give you a... Enjoy that. <laughs> I decided to give them a golden apple. They got so happy that they gave me a fully enchanted, full durability netherite pickaxe. I couldn't even believe my eyes. Thank you for your contribution. Yes. Ooh, someone died here. I haven't been paying attention to the deaths. Oh, wow. 
first person on the server managed to die by a shark. I told everyone they were dangerous. Nobody listened. It was actually something I did horribly wrong and I didn't think through. There was a structure in the world, a portal to which a survivor decides to mine the anvils off. But on the second island, there's a little area here, which I don't think anyone has gone to because- Oh, wait a minute. Someone has. Oh, Smart idea. Off to you, buddy! He's taking the anvils from the build we made, and he can potentially kill us. My god, that is brilliant. What, by the way, is the perfect tool for killing innocent people that are mining during the grace period, where PvP is not allowed. If that's not where it ended, things went even more horribly wrong. You see, despite there being a hundred survivors on the stranded islands, there was also me that was part of that equation of a hundred players. The information I gave them about the island may or may not have been accurate. I told them there was two islands and that they weren't alone. There were a few people that decided not to trust the likes of me, because why would they? I haven't done anything for them, and explored beyond the two islands that they were told existed. To their surprise, there was a third island which housed a mansion. The mansion used to be owned by a rich family, but what were they hiding from all the way out here on a separate island? More on that later. The runner-up team, Team Black Sun, quickly rising in numbers, and they decided to take this fort as their base of operations. Okay, okay. This is a cool place to, like, fort out. This is pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. They decided to host an election and voted Mellow as their crowned leader. Looking pretty good. There's a few people mining in here. Interesting. They sent down a mining team to collect iron and diamonds for the entire team of theirs. Assigned warriors to fight during phase two, which was when murder is allowed, and even a build team for the build competition. Mellow made sure Team Black Sun was on their A-game. What they also did was pretty smart. They prepared for the hunger event, which they weren't even informed about. So I guess they had a bit of experience with this type of Make a copper, but who's making copper blocks? Who is me? Why are you making copper blocks, buddy? Then this weirdo decides to make a copper block. We decide to interrogate him. Why you craft the copper block? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> oh, it was an accident. Remember this weird portal that's located at the top of the mountain on the second island? It's <laughs> so good, <laughs> Survivors decide to go far beyond the first island and trying to figure out what's really going on here. They slowly start realizing that there is more going on here than what me the eye. We're here now. What in the world are you doing, buddy? What what are you up to? What is the point of this? Okay, so let's go to Eopo. Let's check out what they got going on here. Clockwolf, Bionicle. Yeah, this is the most random group of people I've seen, bro. Also a group here. Oh, it's Crafters group. The Moosh Room. Okay. Nice little area down there. This is where the Black Sun stays, if I'm not mistaken. They are on this stuff, dude. They are making their drops to make sure they survive. They have anvils ready. They they know what's up. You know, they're doing wonders right now. Have you guys seen it? Like, he is, he, you are mining with Buddy. You are mining with Fish. He's just mining. He's just going here. They slowly start realizing that there is more going on here than what me the eye. This is DJ Cult. I'd rank them fourth on the list of powerful nations. What is that team name? What happened to... Okay, DJ Daddy. Uh, alright then. That's a... Yeah, that, that's a name. I guess we can... Fires decided to build into the side of the mountain as well. They also held an election and voted Eopoke as their leader. Although Team Ballers, being one of the most powerful nations on this stranded island, they had a traitor amongst their kind. This was due to their policy of accepting new members without even background checking if they're trustworthy or not. But in reality, how could they? And the traitor all along is Xander. I found the Ballers team. Ah, uh, is that what you're joining? Yep, that is the team I'm joining. Obviously, they don't know. They don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> I'm, fe I'm feeling a bit mischievous, you feel me? <laughs> Right. Now a member of Team Ballers, but he isn't just here for fun time and vibes, he had a plan up his sleeve. The start to his plan was simply gain the trust of Team Ballers, gain some loot, and eventually betray them. Wondering if it's gonna work out for him in the long run. Both Team Ballers and Team Black Sun were going head to head with the most members on their team. The distance between the two teams weren't that far off either, but they kept their distance. And as soon as everybody got a little comfortable, we enabled the hunger event. This would basically give players hunger for a few minutes. And surprisingly, by the end of it, we only had one casualty. Remember Team Black Sun? They were prepared for this hunger event with their farms. Despite the current
a world event, Team Black Sun was still ironing all up. They even got a pet for the trip too. The miners were really putting the work in all things to Melo's leadership, and this is a member of Black Sun struggling to fight a fish. Some survivors dying to the likes of aquatic life here around the island. Sharks are honestly as aggressive as ever, and some survivors still haven't learned. The members of Black Sun also got jumped by some skeleton minions, but no casualties for now. Some of the creatures they have to go against get much crazier later in the video, and you don't want to miss out on it. Some skeleton minions also stumble upon the Team Baller's base. That's being made from scratch and attacking one of their members. Which, funny enough, only one of their members realized that they were being attacked and ran away from it. I don't think anyone's noticed. They're getting shot at, but nobody has noticed. <laughs> nobody. Nobody. Maybe they're just not doing damage, you know? Oh, oh, oh. Mellow is on it. Mellow is on it. He's got diamond. Oh, snap. They got on it quick. There was one that went down there, but I guess they took care of it. There's another one over here. Are they going to be taken care of? Shot at. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's so many people here. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, there are a ton of people here. Despite these minor setbacks, their base was slowly growing in size. They are attempting to win the build contest. Depending on who wins at making the best base for their team, they will be awarded with a loot crate with one netherite and a bunch of diamonds and so much more. They didn't want to miss out on this opportunity. I think they were going for more of a little bit of a castle look, but it was kind of strange how they decided to build it at the bottom of the mountain. But hey, I'm not one to judge. Well, actually I am because I'm going to be deciding who gets the best base. Now over to Team Black Sun to see their progress with their base. We have a kingdom forming at the top of the snowy mountain on the main island, with them putting their build team to good work. I don't know what, where is everybody? Did everybody move away from the other base? Yeah, what happened to the big house now? Well, well, well. Oh, everyone needs to work together to build this PvP starting soon when we get these walls. Hey, everybody, did, uh, oh, we need, we need a job. I know. They're, they're doing their stuff. Mello wanted to make sure Team Black Sun was going to be victorious and make the best base in comparison to the other nations and win them that lovely loot crate. So far, just looking at this base being built, Team Black Sun has the best looking base by far. But it is a little bit too soon to say. After that, they started rationing what I like to believe is some armor for some of the members. Hold on, who needs the uh, iron armor? Come here, come here. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Okay. on their kingdom. They quickly went on to the defensive. The chaos that is happening within this is, is insane. But that is, a, that is an amazing base. I'm not gonna hold you. I'm gonna give them a little bit of time, obviously. I didn't give them a lot of time. So they're still resource collecting. Still gathering items. But soon enough began phase two. Murder is now enabled. People are free to kill each other at their own wills. Oh, how this could go wrong. A pigeon is dead. Pumpkin is dead. Ironbot's dead. Oh my gosh. Avatar, Orion, and gone what is going to be happening trying to survive the what i like to believe what the heck is that alongside this we were also going to enable some of the most dangerous creatures that inhabit the island it's only the first of its kind this is the skeletal king he summons his minions and knights to attack all of those that are near him the second you think it's a fair 1v1 fight he then summons five minions but i also mentioned he does an ungodly amount of damage the skeletal king rises at the baller's team of operations without them even knowing
only a few swipes. Xander, after hearing that they got invaded, rushed in to help his ally in need, but it was too late. Wallace, once again, was lowering in numbers. Xander pulls up and attacks Ghibli and gets one final hit on him. <laughs> to go into alliance with Team DJ, since secretly living underneath the ground. Kept away from most of the initial drama and decided to just merely stack up. Besides the biggest teams, there's also a third nation's base that was found owned by Team Shark. Despite them only having two members, they were actually killing a lot of people left and right. They were more of the hunters of stray offs on teams and teams with lower members. They were the underdogs of the event and had full diamond gear that was also enchanted. Let me tell you this much, they are not to be taken lightly. They even had a plan to get the next mini event that would grant them Netherite, which was a scavenger hunt. Remember the town that was on the main island? No one found it yet. So I made an announcement listing the coordinates, saying that there was a place that people can find Netherite here, which piqued a lot of people's interests. So it also attract a huge cluster of different teams all in one area. Who knows what would go down here? Quite a few people arriving, most of them thought it would be either above the houses or just within them, not underground, so I had to give them a second hand, telling them that it was underneath one of the houses. Two members of Team Black Sun came charging in and searched for this loot. Xander from Team Ballers, and obviously the team members from Team Shark that I talked about earlier. A tire was also part of Team Monkeys that was also searching around the basement. That's obviously where the hidden loot was stored, which could have been seen if you look really close behind this one chest, and he mined in. He blocked it off so that none of the members of Team Black Sun could actually take it from him and reap the benefits of his own. It was a treasury by the town's founding fathers that they left hidden underneath one of the houses. But the question is, where did the civilians go, and why they need to flee the city in the first place? The Black Sun members decided it'll be a good choice to kill a tie over the netherite that was also within the treasury. His downfall was Team Black Sun's priority to advancing and securing a win. <laughs> survivors failed to find the actual treasury. Something didn't seem right, and this was the last bit of information that it really took. All members of each team were running around trying to kill a tire. And then he was reincarnated into a world where if you die in the game, you die in real life. Yes, they I'm joking. He was killed for hacking. And whoever picked up the loot, which I believe was either Team Black Sun or Team Sharks, reaped the benefits. The members of Black Sun then returned home after reaping their rewards. They also got met with a casualty. You see, right under the snowy mountain that they chose to call home, there was an ice cavern that was home to the mob known as the Ice Golem. The model, unfortunately, was a little bug, sadly, but still had the same abilities and danger that the actual Ice Golem had. One of the members of Team Black Sun decided to go down there, down the ladder, and they discovered that they were not safe. But not only this, a second Ice Golem spawned that attacked near the land, and they realized despite everything they had, the manpower and items to slay the Ice Golem under the leadership of Melo. The Ice Golem shot icicle arrows at them, started freezing them. Oh, there's a boss down there. I'm not going down there. There's an Ice Golem down there. Fortune kills him! Fortune kills Melo! Fortune killed Melo? Huh? 
and they even froze me. Like what? Rolo and Bilho, they killed off both of the ice golems. After a long and grueling back and forth fight, they then realized something had gone horribly wrong. A member of Team Fallers went in, infiltrated, and assassinated their leader, Melo of Team Black Sun. Wait, what? Okay. Melo died? Yeah, 
once again. Both revives were dedicated to one person in Team Ballers. Now mind you, just one member of Team Ballers doesn't seem like a lot, but don't forget, Team Ballers and Team DJ are also grouped up together, versing Team Black Sun at the very end. While all this was going on, Team Black Sun was on a murdering spree, eliminating every member that they can find. It was down to two teams besides them, which was Team Mushroom and Team Ballers in alliance with DJ Cult. Unfortunately, Team Mushroom was then annihilated. This is where the final fight began. It was Xander and DJ Girl, which we can just call them Team Ballers versus Team Black Sun. Now, although they don't have much gear on them, they ended up finding a glitch in the team system we were using, which gave them such a huge advantage. So you see, since the beginning of this Minecraft Civilization event, there was a set home feature for the team. What Team Ballers realized was that if one of their teammates in spectator mode set their home someplace else, the two living members of Team Ballers would be able to do slash home their way onto a spot, which made it seem like they were being helped out by me, but in reality we're just doing it all themselves. This also brought Team Black Sun into confusion and got Team Black Sun spectators to be the eyes and ears of the operation to killing off Team Ballers once and for all. The Ballers quickly got a plan. They wanted to teleport to a spot that had heavy amounts of lava so that Team Black Sun would burn to their demise. It was working so far and they struggled to actually get to Team Ballers. Fortunately, in all the chaos, DJ Girl was then slain. The only person left was Xander, part of Team Ballers. But one of the teams made a fatal mistake. This was a spectator that died earlier in the event for Team Ballers, who decided to set their home right above Bedrock, making them near impossible to find out while they play their attacks. But what ended up happening was that Xander ended up falling out of the world, phasing through the Bedrock, and the victory goes to Team Black Sun. The members of Team Black Sun ended up repairing a cruise ship and sailing off into the sea after a couple months in, finally escaping the grasses of the island. If you made it this far, you might as well subscribe.